Hello, and welcome back to another Daily Top 10's Top 10 video. The human body is an incredible machine, full of secret powers, incredible chemicals, and occasionally, if you're not careful, a dangerous amount of dinner. Our bodies can regrow bones, heal deep cuts, and fight off a whole host of viruses and infections. And the great advances in medicine have taken these abilities much, much further. Thanks to a continuously increasing life expectancy, most of us now have a great faith in the various cures and treatments that are out there. But how important is this faith? Is the belief in medicine itself part of the healing process? And can the faith alone achieve the same results? So today we're talking about the 10 things you didn't know about the placebo effect. For today's video, we have replaced our subscribe button with a placebo button. It's just a blank button, but if you trust us, then it should work just the same as it normally does. Give it a try. Number 10, Caesalid. A 19th century reporter called Caesalid from Canada set out to uncover the quackery of the Quackakawak tribal shamans, but ended up becoming a great healer himself when he saw that the fakery somehow worked. He witnessed shamans secretly filling their mouths with feathers and then pressing them down on the wounds of their patients, biting the insides of their own cheeks and then spitting out the bloody mess, as if they had sucked the malady from right out of the body. But when he tried it, he found that it worked and genuinely sick people could get better, or at least feel better, even though he knew that he'd done nothing. Number 9. James Lind. James Lind in 1747 performed the first clinical trial, whereby he tried out various cures for scurvy on 12 patients who were as similar as he could find, giving them things such as seawater, cider, and one lucky pair got citrus fruit, which turned out to be the best cure. He split them into pairs and gave them all the same diet, except for the one cure he was testing. In 1762, he published Essay on the Most Effectual Means of Preserving the Health of Seamen, which is not funny. Why are you laughing? Number 8. Mesmer. The earliest placebo test was performed by the French Royal Commission in 1784. Antoine Mesmer had become famous for the healing power he called animal magnetism, an invisible natural force rather than a way to stick chickens to the fridge. His followers claimed to be able to magnetize trees so patients could then benefit from their healing powers. The commission was sent to investigate and it contained Benjamin Franklin and Joseph Ignace Guillotin, whose cure for the headache got a little out of hand. They took a boy around Franklin's estate and told him one of four trees had been magnetized and he must tell them which one. Of course, none of the trees had been, but the boy became increasingly agitated as they moved to each one and ended up having some sort of seizure, one which matched many of those seen at animal magnetism events. Number 7. Your brain is a junkie. Any drug that you take can only work because it is similar to a chemical that your brain already produces, so you have the relevant receptor. Your skull contains a phenomenal medicine cabinet, as well as every illegal substance you could ever get your hands on. You're just not allowed the keys, because otherwise you'd be popping mind pills every minute of the day, and we'd probably never get out of bed. One blink for aspirin, three blinks for opium. Number 6. Pain is the key. Pain relief is probably the biggest area where the placebo works, because rather than being an illness itself, pain is a part of the body, so it can be controlled. It's similar for other things the placebo works on, like nausea, depression, some digestive issues, and occasionally for immunity. Whereas it's not going to help with things like blood sugar levels, cancer, blood pressure, and infection. Number 5. Conditioning Joe Marchant, a PhD microbiologist and science journalist, has been investigating the relationship of the mind and the body for many years, 
and often discusses how many placebos are down to conditioning, such as that demonstrated by Pavlov's dog. Ivan Pavlov was a Russian psychologist, and he studied how if you play a noise like a metronome to a dog before you fed it, it would quickly associate the noise with the food and you would get the similar excited salivation when the metronome played. I guess it also used to dribble in excellent rhythm. Number 4. Even if you know. Marchant says that this conditioning can work on patients on immunity repressants, the kind you're given after a transplant, for example. If you take some placebos in place of your regular drugs, you can get the same response, so it helps people to cut down on dosages. The crazy thing is, it works even if you know it's a placebo. Your brain is just like, yeah, I know it's fake, but I don't care. You can't tell me what to do. Number three, nocebo. These fabrications also happen in the case of the nocebo effect, the evil twin of the placebo. A 2014 review showed that around one in 20 patients who took a placebo in clinical trials for depression dropped out due to negative side effects of the drugs, even though there can't have been any because they were sugar pills. A big part of the placebo is the whole context of the treatment, whether it's a medical trial, a doctor's office, or anywhere else. The very fact that someone is listening to you and trying to help you is part of the cure, and so are the fake side effects. Number two, alternative medicine. Belief in the treatment is what keeps almost all alternative medicine alive and well, even though the vast majority of it has been proven not to work. Homeopathy, acupuncture, and a lot of chiropractics have not outperformed placebo treatments in multiple trials, but they can outperform no treatment at all. To give an example, a systematic review of acupuncture shows that there was no discernible difference between real acupuncture that tried to realign the magical chi that supposedly flows through you and fake acupuncture, which involved being randomly poked with a toothpick. But in both the acupuncture and the toothpick prodding, patients did have a reduced level of pain for their particular problem. So the next time your friend has a headache, grab a chopstick and prod them like a voodoo doll. It's for their own good. Number one, power of prayer. From a medical standpoint, it's likely that many religious faith healings also rely heavily on the placebo effect. Although some of the more extreme claims of miracle cures may be exaggerated, many could be real. A strong faith in a large social gathering would be the perfect environment for your brain to really believe that a cure was taking place and so do some of the curing work itself. Your mind can do incredible things if you really buy into something. So if you did end up going through your spam folder and buying some of those suspicious pills, if it's not getting any bigger, it's just because you didn't believe enough. Thanks for watching another Daily Top 10's Top 10 video. And remember, it's our duty to entertain and yours to subscribe. Hello everybody, welcome to the White House News Conference. Good to see you all here, and yes it is. Uh, Emily from Fake News, good to see you Emily. And of course, uh, David from the Daily Mail, just as fake news, you, you know it. Look, the White House and Trump especially would like to uh, let the world know of his favorite YouTube channel, which is called Daily Top Tens. Yes. Boring. Look, shut up, Kimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Little Kimmy. Mm. Look, the president believes that every member of the world, and especially the US of A, should be subscribed to this channel. It's very important. Due to his passion and commitment to signing up every citizen to daily top tens as part of Trump Care, the president will, effective immediately, right now, yes, be passing a new bill to make this law. The bill is as follows. I, Donald J. Trump, hereby order all my people of the U.S. of A's to, with immediate effect, subscribe to daily top tens. The, this will strengthen the economy by giving us things to watch at work 
improve our corrupt education system by giving kids the opportunity to watch uncorrupted videos, uh, to watch about random crap, and uh, keep the elderly entertained with uh, videos that make no sense at all. Yes, uh, yes. You. When will this bill take effect, and what are the penalties for those who do not obey the rules? Look, uh, now, Donald J. Trump vows that uh, those who do not subscribe lose all internet connection and access to YouTube with immediate effect. Powerful stuff. Look, thanks for listening to the White House Fake News team. Good night, and subscribe.